Step five, starting over, colon, revolt in the desert. Yes, and this ties back, of course, to step one, which we quoted T.E. Lawrence. And the interesting thing about this title, starting over, revolt in the desert, is that T.E. Lawrence, after his epic of surviving World War I in the desert and helping the, the nomads claim independence over the Ottoman Turks. After he returned to England, he started writing the manuscript for Revolt in the Desert, which is actually much shorter than the long version of it, which is called The Seven Pillars of Wisdom, named after, of course, a landmark in uh, the deserts which he was, he was stationed in. And the, the thing about Revolt in the Desert, he had started, of course, a handwritten manuscript, typed it up. There's no computers back then. They hadn't been invented yet. Alan Turing maybe had started thinking about what, what exactly machines did and perhaps how they thought, you know. So he had this handwritten manuscript, T.E. Lawrence. He was on a train, and he was switching trains, and he forgot his whole handwritten and typed manuscript oh, on no yeah on the train the train left he realized he forgot it and of course was probably very upset that he did such a thing i i would be very upset if i left a handwritten manuscript anywhere and he had to start over he had to rewrite the darn thing he didn't what a even, shame. Yeah, he didn't even have the original manuscript to compare the new one to for rewrites. Couldn't do anything. And this, this comes down to your life. And sometimes it crumbles at some point. You need to start from scratch because something goes completely awry, whether you have overdrawn your bank account or whether you bumped into somebody and your entire coffee from Starbucks has spilled tragedy you have to start over in that case and that's more out of your bank account and in any case buying a new suit buying to a... replace the one that got the coffee spilled on it exactly exactly and buying a new coffee even and that's just more more money upon more money and more work upon more work in in this case and you just have to accept the fact that okay i know what has gone wrong I know that I need to start over, and I'm just going to put my head down, and I'm going to start laying bricks again. I'm going to build it up to what it was and make it perhaps better and bigger than what it was. And that's what T.E. Lawrence did with Revolt in the Desert. And you know, the funny thing about Revolt in the Desert is that it was actually a prequel. Well, not, not really so much a prequel as the shorter version of the seven pillars of wisdom because at that time paper was expensive and in order to publish the seven pillars of wisdom it was so long let, let me see i have a copy here let me let me look at it oh it's somewhere around 650 pages long and change uh, plus the, plus the index and that is a lot of paper a lot of paper. So in order to build the funds up, in order to to make the Seven Pillars of Wisdom possible, he published the Revolt in the Desert book. And this is the same case with J.R.R. Tolkien with The Lord of the Rings. He couldn't publish all three books. Uh, actually, it's all one book for those of you who are following us. I am a Lord of the Rings purist. Yeah, yes. and... And it was all meant to be one volume, but it couldn't do that because of the price of paper. So you had to publish three separate little ones, but of course T.E. Lawrence had a different approach. And he had to start over, of course, and he had to gain interest and funds in the bigger project, which is the Seven, seven pillars, pillars of, of wisdom. wisdom. Yeah, and wisdom is perforating that book, you know. It, it's just such an experience, and it's the experience of him essentially having to start over because 
he had to go into another culture, which he was fluent in Arabic. He was so fluent in Arabic. Mm. And, yeah, but but even though he was fluent in Arabic, even though all the nomads and the, the Sharifs and everything were impressed with his ability to speak their language, he had to start over because he was an Englishman. He had white skin. It wasn't the olive complexion or, or some such, and he wasn't so so privy to the cultural isms and he had to start over culturally even in order to build this book very interesting that you bring up sharifs mm -hmm. because uh i believe in the film version one of the characters is played by omar sharif omar sharif yeah yes and he did a, he did a good job i mean he, he was more convincing than Alec Guinness, who sounds really funny. And he's another Englishman having... And, and that's the inter... And, you know, it's funny that you bring up the film version because of Alec Guinness. Alec Guinness had to start over in order to play uh, a Saudi Arabian nomad, you know? And that, that kind of thing. He had to build the character, start over from what he knew, and build something completely... New. I think the same goes for Anthony Quinn, although more uh, the more more of the complexion mm. um, uh, was was evident there. Yeah. Um, but yes, actually, one of my favorite favorite films. Mm. Um, I believe Peter O'Toole is stunning in. Gotta love um, Peter O'Toole. Yes, and I think the key to Peter O'Toole. Mm -hmm is I think he approaches each of his roles from a new point. There's a new mm. beginning. There's a starting over. over. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and that's that it's it's the same with actors, it's the same with with uh, with anthropologists, archaeologists like T. E. Lawrence. He was he wasn't a soldier. All he was was a uh, you know, he knew he knew the culture, he knew the history, he knew the language, but even to start start over, he had to be born essentially, and it's it's really a story of birth, him being rebirthed, you know. Yes, I think I think what you're what you're trying to say mm. is that. Um, in order to truly find ourselves and to mm. truly grow, yeah. we must in ourselves be reborn. And maybe yeah. it's a process that happens several times throughout our life. And maybe mm. that's not a bad thing. It really isn't. It really isn't. Because when when you start over, you reevaluate. And reevaluation is the Oh, what am I trying to say? It's it's that. Oh boy, I'm, I'm I can't even for, help you yeah, out. It's almost beyond words. It's really the. Okay, here we go. I got it. It's really a new, another big bang, of starting over in your own universe. But what a metaphor. Yeah, the big bang, but you're starting over with knowledge that you've had before, almost like reincarnation, almost. But then again, the same in a way. Because you start a new life and you build upon the knowledge you had in other lives yes. in order to continue this yes. flow of this mysterious thing. Now that's something we don't know, but we will know. But we will. Later. Stay and tuned. that is starting, starting over. over.